Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to uh, Launch Complex 40, uh, where we are processing Falcon 9 for uh, launch in November. A uh, little bit about this launch pad. It's a uh, an old Air Force launch pad. Launch Complex 40 was a Titan 3, then 34D, and then a Titan 4 launch pad, which we're operating under or we're operating on under a license from the Air Force. So the, the Air Force licensed us the pad for a five-year period and uh, enabled us to basically build out what we needed to do our uh, launch process. And we're hoping to convert that to a long-term lease uh, here pretty soon. Oh, you know that. So a, a couple things to know. Uh, first off is, um, we're up here in what I call the, the heavy lift zone. So if you look to our north, you would see the Atlas V pad sort of straight behind the bus. And if you look to the south, you'll see the Delta IV pad where you just came from. And then obviously this is our launch pad off to the right. A couple of key features you'll note, our transporter erector is in the vertical position right now, undergoing tests. Normally it is in the horizontal position and only spends just a little bit of time in that vertical position, but that's what actually lifts the rocket from the horizontal position up into uh, the vertical position. You'll also notice the four lighting protection towers. Those are remnants uh, from the uh, Titan days. You can see the flame duct uh, just off to the, to the right here. So that's actually where all of the acoustic energy and uh, thermal energy coming off the base of the rocket gets thrown out away from the pad. And you can see a couple of things we've done uniquely to this this uh, booster is we've added that uh, gray steel structure and we actually just drop water out of that, a lot like a car wash, um, so that uh, we, mid we, we knock down all the acoustic energy so it doesn't bounce back up and vibrate the rocket as it's leaving the pad. Uh, some of the other things you'll note, uh, obviously that transporter erector, you can see the two big hydraulic uh, pistons that drive that from the horizontal to the vertical. Um, the transporter erector uh, has four launch hold downs which hold the rocket down. So we, we actually light the rocket at minus three and a half seconds and then uh, at about zero t plus 0 0.5 seconds if the flight computer senses that uh, all, engine, all nine Merlin engines are burning at 100% and all the pressures and temperatures look good, the hydraulic clamps release and then let the rocket fly. So we actually light it and hold it down uh, checking to make sure everything's good. Uh, the Falcon 9 is a liquid oxygen RP-1 booster. So you can see the 110,000 gallon liquid oxygen tank uh, just off to the right here. Uh, that's actually an old Apollo 1 tank that we purchased for $1 over scrap value and then <laughs> refurbished it. So it was a good deal for us. On the other side of the pad, you will see two 28,000 gallon uh, RP-1 or refined kerosene tanks. Uh, and what, what I'm going to propose is that, that um, we stop here. Uh, what do you think, Brad? We, we can go up to, if you see the uh, yellow uh, chain there, we, we could go up to there if you, if you want to get the group out. Okay. Excellent. Then we'll uh, talk a little bit more when we get out to the base of the pad. So if you can just pull up, um, you're going to be in, so if there's any, any issue, you can pull her out of the way. So, real quickly, as uh, the last folks are going to um, get out of your guys' view unless you want to. Um, boosters being processed in this uh, integration facility right now. Unfortunately, we're due, we're right in the middle as we build up for launch of hazardous operations, so we can't go in the hangar. But what you notice is. Two of the things that were left over from the Titan program were these uh, rails. They used to go about five miles to the south, uh, back to some other facilities. We kept those rails, so we actually, as you'll see, when that thing comes uh, to the horizontal, we'll rotate that whole transporter erector down and then roll it right on these tracks into the hangar. We'll lift the hangar up using two 20-ton cranes, or excuse me, the booster, using two 20-ton cranes, drive that underneath it, lower it down, clamp it down, and then out a little bit closer to uh, the rocket, uh, if you see the clamp arms there, that's right 
just above the second stage, so it goes about probably 15 feet in the current configuration with the Dragon capsule. It goes about 15 feet above the top. It's about 203 foot. Now the, the whole concept here of horizontal integration is the idea is we'd like to be able to keep the booster inside of a protective hangar most of its lifetime. Uh, that way the technicians can work on it. It's right here at hand level. Uh, and the, the idea is we want to get down to opening the hangar door, rolling out, going vertical, fueling and launching in one hour. That's our, that's our goal. Now right now, we're at about 24 hours because we're taking it nice and methodical, making sure we understand the process. We're taking a lot of the manual sequences and automating those. Uh, so we've got a little ways to go to get to roll out and launch in one hour, but that's, uh, that's what drives a lot of what we're doing out here at the launch. So, Mr. Anderson, is the, the motivation for that um, profit or cost based um, to some degree? It, it, you know, it's not primarily driven by that. It's really primarily driven by a booster's better off inside air conditioning and down where you can work on it so you're not dropping tools and other things from high heights. But in the end, if you can get to one hour roll and go, that enables you to, to crank them out. Uh, you know, if, if things don't look good, you roll one, you roll it back in the hangar. It gives you the ability to uh, load things late in the game. If you're uh, going to resupply space station, for example, you can load stuff in the last hours right before you, you roll out. Um, but one thing you'll notice about our pad is there's no gantries. Uh, so when we modify Falcon 9 for man launch, we're gonna have to add some crew access and so forth, so that would be one of the things. So when the booster, on launch day, uh, when the booster rolls out and goes into this vertical position, uh, it's basically a 12 minute operation to go from horizontal to vertical. So you get in the vertical, we plug in uh, quick disconnect lines for the RP-1 and the liquid oxygen down at the base to fuel the first stage. And then you can see up at the top, just near those clamp arms, uh, is where those will actually wrap around the booster. And just below that is where we plug into the second stage. So you get an idea, the first stage goes up to right about where those two big white ducks start. And then that's where the second stage and payload are above that. Now once we fuel the booster with uh, locks and RP-1, about 20 minutes prior to launch, we actually pull the transporter erector back from the 90 degree position to the 78 degree position, clearing it from the, from the booster and prepping for liftoff. So one of the key things you gotta do when you lift off is first, you do that burn, uh, get it, all the engines revved up and the computer's right so that those hydraulic clamps are released. And then you gotta fly, you can see the lightning protection catenary wires you have to fly through that square uh, up there, which isn't a big deal. I mean, if you're straying off course by that much, you that engine. But I mean, when you look at it, it's a little bit, uh, a little bit deceiving as to how uh, tight that is. And then you can get a good view. I was mentioning where we are relative to everything. You guys can see a good view of the two shuttle pads straight through uh, the gap there. So when shuttle or Atlas launch, we have to clear the pad. When Delta IV launch is uh, heavy, we have to clear, so we all impact each other. So. This flight is one of our demonstration flights getting to that capability. We've got 12 uh, on contract with NASA to resupply station, obviously. We're hoping to station with cargo is a really straightforward step now there and so yeah you can set up something now it's really kind of going here. Yeah absolutely I mean we can think that you know that the manifest is Scott Henderson, Space Exploration State. My title is the Director of Mission Assurance and Integration. So you got a lot of hats. Right. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. <laughs> and Tour Director. 
Yeah, that's right. Show demo stuff. <laughs>